What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and to another Outriders video. A couple of days ago I released a Technomancer build video which focused around creating a budget Technomancer with only tier 1 and tier 2 mods that you could essentially use as the building blocks to start building up towards a CT15 capable Technomancer and give yourself the ability to farm legendary gear with relative ease or easier times. Now, there's been some want from the community for me to do something similar with the other classes. So that is actually what we're going to look at today. Something similar for Pyromancer and essentially like a setup for Pyromancer that you can start with as you start farming into later CTs, even CT15. And you start looking for most likely Akari pieces because that's what everybody looks for with a Pyromancer. But if you do enjoy this video or find it useful in any way, please do consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, maybe sharing the video with a buddy. It really does help the channel grow and it just means a whole lot to me. But without any further ado, let's jump right in. As mentioned the premise here of course is a fresh pyromancer that has just recently finished the story you've reached level 30 and maybe you start dipping your toes into expeditions but maybe you or maybe you're a little bit further on into expeditions and you come to 10 11 12 and that's usually where people sort of start hitting a wall maybe even a little earlier maybe 8 9 and 10. the blueprint that i'm going to share with you today is the bare minimum and so if you have access to any legendaries or any tier 3 mods you can already improve upon this build but what we're going to look at today is purple gear only and only tier 1 and tier 2 mods and the footage that you're seeing in the background right now is me doing a ct15 with this and at the end of the video i'll also leave a chem plant runner also running also at ct15 so while you are obviously not doing ct 15s nearly as fast as an optimized class can do them this is capable of doing that and another reason why i like playing like this and recently i took a pyromancer myself again for the first time in i guess months all the way from 1 to ct 15 is it is a great way to learn the character so i play pyromancer main so i don't think there's much more that i could learn from that but in playing that way I realized that I was trying out all of the different skills and I was trying to find a way to make each and every mod that I had at my disposal work while I was trying to farm out certain mods because the idea was that I was trying to do it you know organically as a new player would essentially do it. The bottom line is that what you should be focusing on when you are building up towards a build or when you're trying to create something that can farm CT 12, 13, 14 and possibly 15 comfortably is you should be looking at a healthy mix of defensive mods and offensive mods. When we, generally speaking, I tend to think like an 8-2 ratio is good or even a 7-3, meaning like you need at least two defensive mods. And uh, you can start experimenting with this, of course, and you can start at three defensive mods and start whittling it down. And the more you get comfortable with the class, the more you get comfortable with the character and the skills, you'll be able to see, okay, wait, I can drop this ability because I can play around this. Or by being more situationally aware, I don't back myself into corners and so I don't take as much damage as I used to. So now I can drop this ability. And that's natural for any one of the four classes, not just Pyromancer. Therefore, as said, this is a good blueprint to start off off from, but can obviously be improved and eventually fleshed out when you start slapping some legendary uh, pieces of gear on it, weapons, mods, or even switching to the Akari set. The main thing that I planned for this and why it worked for me is because A, as I've mentioned, I made sure that I had a healthy balance of good defensive abilities or ways for me to get out of trouble or oh shit buttons or whatever you want to call them. But at the same time, also affording myself a way to deal quite a bit of damage when I do need to push and kill an elite or a captain. You have to be able to deal a certain amount of damage at least because the point is even though there's no more timers the longer you leave captains up eventually the more dangerous they become especially if you have groups of two or three of them because their skills can be quite problematic when they start interacting with each other and at ct 15s this can often spell doom for you if you kind of get get trapped and something respawns because it's got a phoenix aura or it gets a shield suddenly when you're about to kill it and it's able to push out that last bit of damage against you but keeping all that in mind let's start out with skills first 
The three skills which I chose for this setup and which I also used on my playthrough were Heat Wave, Feed the Flames and Phaser Beam. These three skills fit into those two criteria which I mentioned earlier and that is the ability to be able to heal out of bad situations, to have oh shit buttons at your disposal and lastly also being able to ramp up and push out damage when you need to. Um, when it comes to phaser, I think phaser is probably one of the best abilities in the game for dealing single damage to a character and even unoptimized like this and only using purple gear, no tier 3 mods of any kind, you are still able to push out such a huge amount of damage that you can essentially drop a captain or elite with one shot at CT15 or at the very least definitely two shots. Now, the reason for the other two abilities being there is because they are both on low cooldowns, but also because they're clearly involved in this ramp up mechanic that allow Phaser to do more damage. The other thing as well as in this setup, as you'll see, Phaser also is a little bit of an oh shit button for us. And it's on a low cooldown, so you can often use it in situations where you're taking a lot of incoming damage and you'll be able to tank that damage and essentially kill everything that's in front of you. Now, let's go to the weapons first and have a look. So as mentioned, this is going to be all purple. So my assumption here is, you know, you're running around with, you know, purple gun or you've got some legendary guns and they're not any great or any good for that matter. So here I have a submachine gun. And the most important thing for me that I was looking for on this gun was I wanted status power 30%. The reason being that we're trying to stack as much status power as possible is, of course, because phaser beam feeds off of that. And as you can see here, just because of the fact that I have stacked so much status on this character, I'm shooting a phaser that deals a base of 650k damage. Now, as I've mentioned, I, I didn't even bother to level up the attributes of, you know, the other two attributes, weapon, life, leech and healing received. I only updated status power. And then I don't really care about the other two weapons because I'm not going to be doing any weapon switching of any kind. I'm literally just going to run it like that. And in the footage that you saw before, I was doing exactly the same thing. Now, the two mods that I have on here are Essence Thief and Death's Chains. Es Essence Chief. Chief. <laughs> Essence Chief. That's actually, that's actually a pretty good uh, name for a mod. Essence Thief. Uh, these shots regenerate your health and because you're shooting a submachine gun your fire rate is quite high even though this is on a one second so i mean you cannot regenerate faster than one second it's not huge amounts of damage that you'd regenerate but oftentimes this can you know help you if you just while retreating or rolling out of the way you just spray across some enemies and you actually get a little bit of life back death change is a really really good level 2 mod or tier 2 mod that is overshadowed by better options in the tier 3 category but since we're not using any of that death change is really good here it's on a low cooldown of two seconds and this binds enemies when you shoot them and ba no so one at a time right this is not it, it kind of makes it sound as if these chains connect enemies together which they don't but this binds an enemy and then essentially puts a dot on them that deals almost 200k over three seconds now this is enough to kill small porforo just by shooting them with this and then leaving them these essence chains or <laughs> these death chains jesus these two mods i never use them so so they're messing with my mouth uh, these death chains are enough to essentially kill them and because it's on such a low cooldown you can put this on something every two seconds now as i've mentioned we're not going to be worrying about switching weapons so we can go right ahead and look at the gear next now on each piece of gear of course you want to have anomaly power because you're not playing bullet or firepower uh, pyromancer you are playing anomaly power pyromancer so that should be the main stat that you're looking for as for the two st sub stats cooldown reduction and status power is key here now again you'll notice that i haven't updated or upgraded the cooldown reduction on any of these pieces and again i just wanted to simulate the idea of maybe someone that didn't know that they had to do that or didn't have enough material to do that or anything like that but again the point is this is really the base level of this gear and it can get so much better but i did however increase the status power and that's just because i also wanted to showcase the raw power of phaser even at this sort of like you know uh, low value or, or bottom tier value due to the fact that you're just playing with purples now on here i have nova which increases the range of feed the flames feed the flames doesn't have that long a range by default so this doubles the range essentially and actually allows you to reach almost all the way across the screen to stuff that have just come into view which is fantastic uh feed the flames is not only your ramp up ability but it is also an oh shit button for you if you're taking a lot of damage you can feed the flame something and it actually transfers a bunch of health to you which is fantastic 
I have frequent phase on here as my second mod because that reduces the cooldown of phaser by 30% and that's massive. It's due to that that we have such an immensely low phaser, including all of the cooldown reduction that we're stacking, of course. But that's why we have a below seven second phaser, as long as some changes that we make in the class tree as well, of course. Our feed the flame, by the way, is on a 10 second cooldown and our heat wave is on a seven second. And in this particular build, we are running two heat waves. So that means we have two and then it goes on a cooldown of seven seconds. Now on the chest piece here, I use tidal wave and that gets me my second heat wave. And then I use bullet kindling here, which says it deals, you deal 20% more damage against enemies afflicted by burn. Almost all of your skills cause burn. So you are constantly going to have stuff that's on fire around you. And so those things will take 20% more damage. Remember that your melee, whether you're single meleeing something or AOE meleeing, that also causes stuff to burn. So it's always a good idea to have a few things burning because you'll be dealing more damage to them. And there's also some skills life leech involved in that. Then on the third piece, on the pants, I have size matters. This increases the radius of phaser beam. This is quite good though, because by default, phaser beam is kind of like a pinpoint laser. And so this allows you to essentially fire in between groups of enemies and you know get them all along the way. It also creates some sort of like a little bubble around you so that even if something is to the side of you, it'll still catch them as well. So all in all, just a great uh, add on to phaser, which just makes you deal way more damage in a bigger area essentially if, especially if you're not that good at aiming sometimes i don't see that little white dot all that well so i think size matters has saved my ass a whole bunch of times then we on on the pants we have our first piece of let's call it you know survival gear or our defensive mod and that's rejuvenation now what rejuvenation says is it gives you firepower anomaly power and armor for eight seconds whenever your health is replenished as a pyromancer your health is replenished whenever you kill a marked target meaning something that you've used skills on but also you can this can also be triggered by you picking up a med pack it can be triggered by skills life leech giving you a little bit of life so basically this is on almost all the time it's on for eight seconds then it has another two seconds of cooldown and then it can go again so this is an almost always on effect which is really good on our fourth piece, our gloves, we've got burnt out here. This says that damaged enemies from heat waves take 25% more damage for eight seconds. Now, because we have two heat waves, we can stack this up. And generally speaking, it means that you can heat wave, heat wave, and then shoot. And then, you know, your bullets are going to deal more damage. If you heat wave, heat wave, and then feed the flames, that's going to do more damage. But more importantly, if you heat wave, heat wave, and then you shoot them with a phaser, that's going to do quite a lot more damage. Now, Something that you have to bear in mind is if 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 you've seen people play with the Akari set, you'll be used to an extremely wide heat wave. But the by default heat waves uh, sort of width or girth, if you will, is quite thin, and so you might have to just sort of be learn that that accuracy. But then again, it's not like the case that I was in where I was used to playing Akari and then I came to record this video. So I had to, you know, get used to like the thin heat wave again. But in any case, I just figured I'd mention that. Wide grip allows you to absorb one additional target from Feed the Flames. So Feed the Flames hits one target at a time. This basically lets you hit two. So that's double the damage and that's also double the health. Then lastly on our boots, I've got Volcanic Armor here. And this, this right here, is what not only makes phaser a a nuke button but it also makes it an oh shit button so a lot of the times especially in the footage that you saw earlier and that that you'll see with the game plan run is you might see me hold off on using a phaser until something is like right up against me or positioning or something like that or until i see oh, oh i'm taking too much damage because the minute you activate this you become a lot more durable in fact you you reduce your anomaly damage and your weapon damage by 65 percent as long as you're channeling this phaser to shoot it now that in combination with the other two defensive mods which we have which is of course rejuvenation over there and damage absorber over here makes you quite sturdy and quite durable while you're shooting the phaser and of course the minute the phaser goes off it's going to deal a lot of damage and just shoot a whole bunch of life back into you so it's a great way for you to essentially get out of trouble now last but not least let's go over to the class tree now this is going to look like some crazy ass mixture here but that's because 
the point is if you go full bottom tree you kind of have to use you know it's expected to be something like an akari overheat ash blast combo or something that utilizes thermal bomb if you go mid tree you should definitely while this could work if you go full mid tree you should be using mods and 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 and, and abilities or rather skills and your playstyle should be in such a way that you're trying to abuse the resistance piercing that mid tree offers and last but not least if you're going top tree you should be fully specking into bullets or at least into a weapon that deals considerable amount of damage because all of top tree is going to help or accentuate your weapon damage this setup however gives me the best of each little world if i can put it that way and what we're trying to do here is we're trying to we're trying to pick up as much utility as much as, as much pc and as much survivability as we can and then last but not least we want to support this ramp up mechanic of ours now in building it this way you absolutely can do that let me let me explain so we're trying to pick up some anomaly nodes and some additional damage nodes that are on the way we do want to get wildfire because this drops all of our cooldowns across the board for all of our abilities by 10 percent we also just want to get these nodes here because these three magma golem nodes here get empowered by distance flame here which gives us another seven and a half percent anomaly power now also the other reason why we're shooting through the top here and last but i mean obviously remember to pick up extinction as well because this just makes you deal 20% more damage against stuff that's at 30% health or lower. As I've mentioned, what often happens is you'll shoot a captain or an elite with a phaser and that'll drop it to near death. So that means extinction kicks in and you're dealing a lot more damage to that captain or elite and they'll be able to drop them quicker. Now, incinerate is a soft CC, which I love on, on, tech, uh, on Pyromancer and I kind of use it almost all the time. And that is that as soon as burn ends, something just automatically gets the ash status as well now ash is super powerful because it is an interrupt but at the same time it's also something that freezes the enemy in place and they can't do anything and depending on how much status power you have and some other mods that you have like for instance if you were to pick up uh here we go like curse of pompeii ash afflicted on enemies lasts 50 percent longer that effect can actually last for quite a while and so therefore you are ccing enemies and they're, they're not dealing damage to you which is great and you can recover maybe heal up or get ready for your next phaser the ramp up one that we're looking for is hot situation and hot situation says basically that when you feed the flames you increase your anomaly power by 45 percent now, if we look here at the start, even with this gear here and with anomaly power on each piece and picking up the class tree as we have it here, we have an anomaly power rating of 185k, which is fairly high. So that's going to basically push that to almost 200 and I would say, I guess like 275, 285 around there. And that's without anything else still boosting it up or anything like that. So that's overall just going to increase your skills and make you deal a whole bunch more damage that's it for the build guys remember i'm gonna keep some footage running after i say goodbye to y'all and you can see how i finished the chem plant run with some highlights in there of course uh let me know in the comments down below if you have started building your pyromancer and what your journey was like and if you built something similar to this and if this is helpful in any way there's still two more characters to go with this similar approach and that's of course devastator and trickster so definitely stay tuned for that but go ahead and check in the description of this video for the Discord server that I host. There are lots of outriders, like-minded gamers on there who are always carrying people and doing, you know, expeditions and stuff together. If you need any game knowledge or have any questions, there are very helpful people there. But most importantly, it's just a bunch of really cool cats that are hanging out together, like-minded gamers, and no one can have enough of that. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, especially if you made it this far. And it's just very important to me that you have a great morning, a great afternoon, and a super awesome evening wherever you are in the world. And until next video, fucking cheers.